So, uh, let's address the elephant in the room. The thing we've been teasing for so long, the magic metal item shredder. The Peacemaker! Uh, of course, you've probably already had your chance to see this uh, insatiable little thing gobble up items, but let me touch on it. Not like that. Uh, so it can be programmed, as 42 said, to dismantle items automatically. Uh, players choose the grades that should be broken down, and it gobbles up whatever drops in one's way. Uh, but the part that might not have been given much attention yet is the quest dialogue. Because let's be honest, who reads quest dialogue? But since this was a piece of work that I'm rather proud of, let me drop the jokes and go through the little tidbits here and there. So, first things first, I wanted to build a character that's not perfectly stable, mentally. I didn't want something as masterful as uh, Lucius or 314, but still something along these lines. Uh, thus, he's not quite a jester, but he's under enough stress to make him just a bit of an absurdist character. He's one who may ramble a bit before returning on topic, and he's just a bit formal. Not terribly so, but being a survivor of the apocalypse should push a few characters into such uh, conduct to put it lightly. Uh, his dialogue is also trying to fit the plot chronologically by mentioning future events. It tries to do some world building as well by rebranding dismantling an in-game process as a process that's useful to humanity, lore-wise. Of course, 42 is also quite aware, so he shows some uh, meta level of understanding of the world he's in. So after the techsmith greets the player, he asks them to take a seat. Figuratively, that is, because as he says, uh, have you noticed how the apocalypse ravaged chairs? Magnificent to observe. Now, this is both a jab at how there are next to no chairs in the game, so all NPCs in the game stand up all the time, with the exception of Peck, who squats, and the reference to the magnificent chair, a future quest item. The next line is, so HQ always wants us to pump out scraps for the rebuilding uh, process. Where we get them is none of their concern, we're simply expected to provide. This is what I mentioned before, uh, scrapping items and in-game function is kind of retconned as a process that's useful to survivors. They're rebuilding after all, which would require some materials. Of course 42 has a touch of character depth as well, as he expresses dissatisfaction with this demand. Now, the next line takes a much more meta approach. Uh, fortunately, demons always seem to carry all sorts of colorful metal junk we can dismantle. Breaking it all down by hand is quite a mundane task, though hurts the thumbs like a devil, too. So, there is a few jabs at in-game mechanics here. For one, demons do carry loot, a perfectly reasonable game mechanic, but not one that really makes sense realistically. Having imps drop their weapons on death is logical, much more so than them dropping stuff that's uh, random and Colorful, that is, the item grade system. Uh, the in-game function of dismantling items is also mocked here, as players do so with no apparent assistance. Hence the line about it hurting the thumbs, pointing out the absurd notion that players break down metal stuff by hand. Lastly, doing so for each piece individually is quite mundane in terms of gameplay, so that's also snuck in there. This is followed up by this line. What's more, Salvage Devil's property takes eons to process, more than two, less than three to be exact. So, this line does serve as a very odd illusion, but it also builds up the character as one who is not completely stable. At a discourse level, this does make little sense, apart from it pointing out that uh, large amounts of salvaged gear should logically take long to process. At the same time, it's a very obscure, twisted allusion to the game itself and its predecessor. Hellgate was released after Diablo 2 and before Diablo 3, so hopefully using the word devil in this context should hint at such a wordplay. Now, the next few lines outline the quest, so there isn't much to go through there. There are some minor bits though, like its current core just lacks some arcane essence to ignite its appetite, and these blueprints should let you smelt one out of them right on the field. Convenient, is it not? So, the former tries to establish some connection between magic and technology, in an attempt at world building. It was also inspired by the quote, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic, a quote by Arthur C. Clarke that's also used in the game. The latter again jabs at how the in-game crafting system doesn't make terrible sense, realistically. Once the player is done, 42 says, Should the prototype work, we will certainly spare one for all your heroic adventuring needs. This of course references how the player is the hero, one who has adventuring needs, not unlike old RPGs. Speaking of, the idea of uh, prototypes of inventions being shared with the player did come from Icewind Dale 2, where at some point the player helps Grey Dwarves create a crossbow and gets a prototype of it in return. This is not an original idea by any means, but it is where I got it from. 
The next line is very amusing to me, as 42 says, how does ITM SCRP, item scrap, sound? No? Uh, this is one of the names that we initially considered for the Peacemaker, since it would scrap items. So him mentioning it and then rejecting it reflects our own naming choice. One of my most favorite lines comes right afterwards, when 42 says, uh, Sir Lucius got his hands on one as well, but to what ends I dare not ask. He did mention a golem he could now build out of all his ancient gear. Uh, the thunder, was it? So this bit does many things. For one, it's another world builder, as it mentions characters interacting with each other. Uh, Lucius, being the madman that he is established to be, would want to get his hands on such an invention. Of course, 42 is rather formal, so he refers to him as Sir, regardless of the situation at hand. Uh, then, this of course is reference to the Lightning, a giant robot that Lucius in 3.14 built later in the game. This serves to imply that Lucius had been hoarding gear, and the Peacemaker allowed him to scrap it for materials. Of course, 42 didn't pay much attention, so he mistakenly thinks it will be named the Thunder. This also builds on the original illusion of this development. Uh, the player would get on, or ride, the Lightning, a line that Lucius actually says himself, and an allusion to Metallica. Conveniently, Ride the Thunder is also a movie that now exists, so 42's mistake still works. Lastly, 42 refers to it as a golem. While this does work narratively, it's also probably the oddest illusion. Building a golem out of one's ancient gear is a veiled allusion to Ancient Gear Golem, an iconic monster from Yu-Gi-Oh! To finish up the main quest text, 42 says, Here is yours, as promised, completely free of charge, of course. Consider it a token of our appreciation for all your support. This is by far the most meta line of the quest. Not only is it a jab at how Global's item of the same function would cost money, but it's also a line where, essentially, the team directly addresses the community. Here we pretty much state that it's an item that was promised, figuratively, that it's free, as we've often said the whole project would be, and that it's a token of our appreciation. Of course, this also works on a narrative level, as 42 would be grateful for the player's support in making it. That sums up the main quest, dialogue. There's also two little tidbits though. One comes up if the player talks to 42 before completing the quest, where he says, high-tech magic can't be fueled by scraps, I'm afraid, not in this context anyway. Of course, this is another meta wordplay joke, referencing scraps being used in the game to upgrade items. Lastly, my absolute favorite was when 42 gives the player the Peacemaker blueprints and the Peacemaker itself. He just goes, Tada, which Omerta decided to go with. This beautiful little line works perfectly, I think, as it doesn't fit 42's demeanor, and thus it highlights his absurdist character. It's also arguably better and more organic than the generic take items line that's usually there. So that's pretty much it. Just in case you were wondering just how much work went into those lines that flew by, now you know. Uh, stay tuned for more obscure quest text that makes sense to nobody but me, and I'll see you next time.